Hey guys, so in this tutorial, I'm just going to talk about uh, data types in Max and like how they relate to what you probably learned in things like P5 or processing or Python and JavaScript and what is unique about them in Max and like how they're referred to and how we use them. Uh, I have this like helpful kind of like layout of what all the different data types are and like how they can be used and what objects correspond with them a little and uh, what can go wrong. Um, <clears throat> so you can look at that and that's like a slower paced way of like kind of just like walking through it. Uh, but I'm just going to try and build out a little of what we're seeing here and we can look at it together. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in here really quick yeah, at 200%. I'll uh, turn that grid on so you can see the locking and unlocking. Um, and basically there are four different, I guess there are five technically different types of data types. I only talked about four in the other one. One is uh, a bang and a bang is, we'll grab a message box here. It's just unique to Max. There's not really anything else like it that I can think of in other languages. But if I send a bang to this message box, uh, you can see it says bang. And bang is Max's way of saying, go do this. Go do the thing you're supposed to do. Um, and that we'll cover that more and you'll see how it's used as we get more into Max. Um, but the other four are the ones I want to talk about a little more. Um, first off, there is, if I grab up here, there's an integer box. And quite simply, uh, this is an integer. Uh, you should know what that is at this point, I hope. But basically, it's a whole number. There's no decimal point. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, right next to that, we have a float. Um, you can see that if I click on this little arrow down below, uh, you can get a number, and then it gets a flow num, and ignore that one for now. But if I grab this one, flow num, then you can see I get the exact same thing, except now there's a little decimal point right here. Uh, and I could, I'm going to copy paste that, oops, sorry, and copy paste that, nope, <laughs> and copy paste that, and this is just a float. And uh, if I hit F, that's the hotkey for making a float. If I hit I, it's the hotkey for making an integer. Um, so right off the back, these two are essentially the same. Um, obviously they're not, but uh, I can only do whole numbers in here. Well, in a float, if I grab out past here, I can start to do decimal point values or float point values. Um, and generally anything that receives an uh, integer can receive a float and it'll just automatically round up to the integer. And you can even see like, something like this, uh, if I copy paste that, and I take a float and I feed it into here, it's just gonna round up to a, a whole number there. Um, or sorry, an integer. If I go the opposite way, what's interesting is it will still be a integer as a value, it looks like it, but it's actually turning it into a floating point number. It's just uh, 78.000. Uh, so it'll still retain the fact that it is a float. Um, moving right along, if I bring out a comment, the other thing we have, oh, sorry, not a comment. If I bring out a message, uh, we can also have strings. Uh, boo, uh, foo, bar. Um, I guess I should type each of these in a different one. Bar, Fred, and when you're sending a message to something, you're essentially sending a string to it. Usually, um, a it, it, oddly enough, in Max, a string is also. I think it's more commonly called a symbol. Um, I'm not quite sure why they decided to go with that. Uh, there are some nuances to that, but generally if you see either one of these two things, they mean the same thing. Um, if I were to, you know, a, a string can have, it can have a numerical value in it, it can have an ASCII value in it, it can have a, a number, or sorry, it can have like a, uh, a letter in it, it can have a symbol in it. Um, so it doesn't have to just be Fred, it could also be Fred 78, 
it could be um, exclamation point, exclamation point, gizmo, uh, zero, zero, sit, five, five, five. Uh, these are all just strings, um, and they'll get treated as such. Uh, then past that, I guess I'll get rid of these two since they don't really show anything different. Um, there's also a list, uh, and a list is, I suppose, a little bit like an array. I'm going to backtrack that and say that's not true. Uh, a list is just a, um, it's a, it's a series of elements made up of either integers, floats, or strings. Um, and you can display them in a message. So if I were to do um, 12 and 37.3 and um, read as a message, this becomes a three element list. And you can see that it's separated by the space. Uh, and generally anything in a list is gonna be separated by that space. Um, if, it, if I did this, this would become basically a string uh, and everything would get all packed together, but you can see that here. Um, so just going right along, we have our list here. And basically all of the objects in Max uh, are usually expecting one of these four values. And they're gonna tell you which one they expect. And if you send it the wrong one, it'll usually send you an error telling you that that's not the right thing. So if I go right away, if I have um, random, you can see in this, uh, we've used it a lot before, this write inlet, it's expect set a random number range, so we could feed it an integer. We could also probably feed it a float, uh, and it would probably round up um, since it only gives us whole numbers anyway or integers. Uh, but if I fed integer into the first inlet, and you remember the first inlet actually expects a bang. Um, I'm gonna open up the max console here. But if I just start sending it integers, you can see right away we're getting an error that says random. Uh, it doesn't understand int. Um, so right off the back, you can see we got to get the right data type to the right inlets. Um, and that's just a quick example of what happens when it receives something it doesn't know what to do with. And, uh, yeah. So I'll leave that open. I'll leave this open for the rest of it for a little while. Um, I don't want to get, I don't think there's too much I have to explain about these. Uh, they seem pretty self forward, like, uh, messages, like I said, are usually some kind of string. Uh, you can also change arguments with an integer or a float or a string. Um, but list is something we haven't really encountered yet. Uh, and it's going to become more and more important uh, as we get into, especially into video stuff. Um, and just to kind of give you a sense of like some of the ways that we manipulate list, uh, I'll start working with some objects. So a really common one is called pack. Uh, and pack is going to, it's going to pack individual elements like an integer, a float, or a symbol together into a list. And we just have to tell it what kind of data it's going to pack together. So I could pack together four integers. Uh, I have to give it an argument for each thing that's going to pack together. So I could say, I'd say I wanted a four integer uh, list. I would say, okay, the first inlet, I want it to receive an integer. That's going to be represented as a zero. Uh, and it could be another zero, and then another zero, and another zero. And when I hit enter, now I have four inlets. And you can see that it says, uh, integer to be element one in list causes output. Integer to be element two, integer to be element three, element four. If I added another zero on here, uh, then there would be five. Uh, and I'll just go back down to three for a second so I don't have to and I'll copy paste this. And I'll grab a message. And you remember the one thing that's not actually I'm not gonna use that, I'm gonna use a print. So everything will be printed over to here. And I'll take that and I'm gonna hit that first element, that second element, and that third element. And I'm gonna lock. And if I type 10 in the, this first element, you can see over here, we have a list that's 10, 0, 0. So it's just gonna default to these values before it receives something else on the second and third here. But that 10 goes and gets packed right here. 
and it all gets packed together as a, a three element list. Um, funnily enough, now if I go over here and I type 50, um, nothing happens. And if I go over here and I type 40, nothing happens too. But if I type 20 on this first inlet, now we have a list that says 20, 50, 40. And this goes back to what I was talking about with the hot inlets and the cold inlets. Um, whenever anything is received in a hot inlet, you can see how it says causes output. Anytime any value is received in a hot, uh, hot inlet, and that's just representing this orange thing right here, it's going to pass the info along. It's going to trigger this object basically to take action and return some kind of information or some kind of data. This cold inlet, though, uh, it's, it's just going to store it. So that 50 will go in here, and it's not going to cause anything to get triggered or uh, returned out of the object, but it's going to remember that 50 is now stored, and it's going to remember that 40 is not going to be stored there. And there may be reasons for why you want only this inlet to uh, output the information. You might have a stream of numbers that's changing here and here, but only once every second do you want it to actually update and tell you what is captured or stored in there. Um, on the other side of that, though, I can make another object. And I'm going to call this one POC, or it's basically PAC, but without a C. Uh, and funnily enough, even though, remember I did like the zero, zero, zero? You could also do I, I, I. I think you could even do integer, integer, integer. Um, those are all the same thing, so whatever one works best uh, for you to remember what's going on in here. But now, if I take these three elements, and I pack them together, notice that each of these new inlets is orange. So this, basically you use a POC uh, object whenever you want any of the inlets to trigger an output. So I lock that, and now, oh, Sorry, I was totally wrong. You can't do integer. You can do I, I, I though. There we go. So each time I change a value, it's outputting here. And now it's also doing that here. And I'll just, if I clear everything right here, uh, if I type 50 and 20, now they're all firing and outputting the information. And that can be super helpful. Um, and then it doesn't have to all be the same data type though. As we saw here, it's made up of a few different things. With this object, we just have to be able to tell it which kind of data we're expecting. Uh, and we could do that with an S for string and an F for float. So now, I have my integer in the first one, my float in the second one. Oops, sorry, and the third one. And uh, I'll do my symbol or my string over here. Now you can see, yeah, we have a three element list that's composed of all this different information. Um, and yeah, uh, like I said, I'm not going to get, I don't need to. Uh, it will become more apparent why this is important when we get further into it and uh, into learning Max. Uh, but just know that list manipulation is really important. Uh, and another way that we can play with list is we can do unpack, uh, which is just the opposite. And uh, I could say unpack zero zero zero, and now it'll show us the first element of a list, the second element of a list, and the third element of the list. So I'll just copy paste that. And I'll make a message. Sorry, just uh, hit M there, but make a message like this. I go 30, 40, uh, 12. I'll copy paste that, and I'll do 24, 32, 6, or 55. And now, when I feed it a list, it's going to unpack it each into its individual elements. Um, and we could also do that, like I said, with something that is a symbol. And uh, we could also do a float right here. I could just do a zero point as a float. 
I'll grab, or I'll make another one. I'll make, uh, let's see, sonar, uh, 40 and 55.555. And I'll grab this message here. And you remember if we uh, hook up anything to the right inlet of a message, it'll just display whatever is coming out of it. And that's a really great way of debugging information. I'll grab my integer over here. My float over here. And I'll copy paste that make another one. And I'll make this radar. Uh, 3000, 0 0.001, and I'll lock the patch. And now it's unpacked each of those different types of data into their own individual elements. I can do that over here too. I can pack it out and then uh, I got radar 3000.001. And actually, as you can see, it doesn't display that right here. If I, if I unlock it and drag it out, then we can see that we can actually go I'm not quite sure how far down the decimal values it'll go, um, but pretty far it looks like. Um, yeah, and then what's fun about lists though is you can start to like play with, it's not just about unpacking and packing them all together. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these. Or actually, I don't know, maybe I'll need these at some point, but I'll put them over here. I'll just hide them, how about that? I'll clear the message here. Uh, there's a great group of objects called ZL. Um, and it's kind of an odd thing. If you open up the ZL help, it's a little different than some of the objects we've seen so far. It's, I know this looks intimidating, but the name after ZL, the argument, is basically how it behaves and what it does to each list. Um, and there's a whole bunch of them here. And this is starts to get really... Uh, really important when you're working with stuff like um, uh, Arduino, uh, where like you're just like uh, the order of operations of information coming again, you're gonna get a lot of sensor values and you'll have names for things and you'll have different values coming out of it. Uh, and you'll need a lot of ways of doing list processing basically. But just to give you a little bit of a sense of uh, what we're doing here, I think there's a, uh, if I can go back here, I'm just gonna look at it. There's this one, this one, this one, this one. Uh, and we'll start with the simplest ones right away, actually. Uh, ZL uh, Len, Len, you've probably seen in other data uh, or other programming languages. If I make a message and it's like 23, 24, 25, uh, 70, 70, 60, and I say print. it's just gonna return how many elements are in that list. Um, and, you know, that can be useful. We'll find ways to make that useful eventually. Uh, ZL th thin's a little different. Um, what it does, its behavior is to take an incoming list and to remove any repetition that it finds in that list. And you can see that we have two of these 70s here. So now when I feed it this and we print it out, you can see that it's stripped away one of those 70s because um, it's like its only job is to make sure we don't have any repeats of what uh, is in our list. Uh, ZL group is a little different. We're not going to feed it a list. It'll actually make a list for us. And the four is an argument that's telling it, I'm going to make an integer box. The four is an argument telling how many elements or how many pieces of data have to be passed to it before it groups them all together. So it almost has like an internal memory of what came before. So if I go one, two, three, four, it's gonna group all of that together, one, two, three, four, and then it's gonna reset and listen to the next four elements. I can go five, six, seven, eight, and it'll pass all those out. And now I can just start grabbing it like this and going up and up and down. And every time it receives a discrete individual piece of information or data, it's gonna wait until it gets four of those and it's gonna package all of them together for us. Um, and then iter is a little bit, it's almost a different version of this. If I give it uh, just this and I get back to my print, iter is going to 
break it down from a, uh, if this has six elements in it, it's going to break it down to lists that are two elements long. Ooh, sorry. Um, so if I feed it this, oh, it looks like we got like a graphical glitch there. I'm not quite sure what that is, but let's see if that take care of it. I don't know. Uh, but besides this random glitch we have, you can see if I feed it this, it breaks it into 25 uh, and 70, and then 23 and 24 and 70 and 60. So it's breaking up our six element list into groups of lists that are like two elements long. Um, and I could add in another 88, 79. And I'll break those up. So yeah, this is just a couple, this is just some examples of like what types of data we have and then specifically like why lists become so important in Max and like that there's a lot of different ways to manipulate and play with them. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions as always, feel free to email me. Um, and don't forget that if any of this didn't make sense, uh, and you want like something a little more written explanation, everything on the patch that was included on the GitHub page should also explain some of this. Um, yeah.